The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory. Jesus said to his disciples, Be alert, be watchful. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly, and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. God is our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. The place of God as Father is important. For everyone who is begotten by God to also recognize that he or she is a child of God is very important. That gives a sense of dignity and value. That I am a child of God. It's important. Sometimes it's an assumption that is not that to be taken lightly. Not many people also recognize that. Sometimes, even in our lives, people live so much with doubts of who they are. Sometimes we may have lost a sense of the dignity of who we are. Sometimes we're floating in the world. Floating. Like we do not belong to anyone. Sometimes we're in the heart of loneliness. The heart of isolation. Sometimes we feel like we're just dangling especially in the world given to so much. There's so much in the world, yet there's so much less of enjoyment and joy when we think or we feel not belonging to someone. But Isaiah the prophet says very strongly today, you, Lord, are our Father. God is our Father. Do you experience it in your life? Do you experience God's fatherhood in your life? Huh? Do you experience it? Sometimes? Always? Sometimes you feel that you're alone. That's by the fact. Do you have you seen? You could be in a crowd of people yet feel a sense of aloneness or even loneliness. Not only aloneness or aloof, but you are in a crowd. So God is speaking to you right where you're sitting in that pew. God is your father. He is your father. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways? Sometimes we wander. We wander away. We, are, we want to be independent. We want to be on our own. We want to do our things because we think we are capable and sufficient for ourselves. Yet, it's the greatest lie ever told. 
The greatest lie is the feeling of independence from God. And that independence does not allow us to recognize the awesome goodness that God has done over time. The devil makes us to forget how good God has been to us. Isaiah the prophet says, while you rough awesome deeds, we could not hope for. God gives us life. God gives us shelter. God gives us a world to live in. A world where to be blessed, to be favored. A world where miracles abound if we have eyes to see. And he says, such as they had not heard of from of old. The blessings that God has for us, you know, new every morning. Every morning, every morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Steadfast, faithfulness, new every morning. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such great deeds for those who wait for you. For those who wait. Those who wait. Ah. Are we able to wait? We are in a frenzy. We are in a, you know, read a lot. Frenzy, working, active. And if somebody is not active in America, <laughs> busy, what do you say? Oh, he, someone told me some time ago, he said, Father, my life is boring. I said, what does that mean? I've got, I've got, I have nothing doing. My kids are not doing sports. Are not, no. My life is boring. I like it, I said. I like your life. It's boring. But it is not boring. I like it when we are able to wait. Do you think your life is boring? So you fill with activity. Fill and choke the world with activity. And because we choke ourselves with activity, we are not able to wait. We are not able to feel the voice of conscience. The voice of God. Speaking to the depth of our hearts, saying, you are mine. The depth of voice that is speaking, you are not in isolation, you belong to me. Because sometimes we use activity to numb that voice. We use activity to quieten the voice that is calling us and saying, I am thine, O Lord, I have heard your voice. And he soothed thy love to me. That I love to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the place where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. To the precious bleed inside. It's when we are calm, when we are waiting, that we hear the voice drawing us nearer. Drawing us nearer to acknowledge the fatherhood of God. To acknowledge that we belong to God. That we are not isolated. We are not alone. We are not just thrown out there belonging to no one else. There is none who calls upon your name. Yeah, that's, what it, that's, that's why. Because when we do not call upon the name of the Lord, he appears absent to us. He becomes present only when we call on his name. But you know what? He's always there. God is always there. 
If we live in the present, he is there. If we call on him, he is there. You know, in the, in the, in the, in, 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 in the times of the Israelites, God, you know, Moses always pray, pray to God, God, show me your face, show me your face. And God said, you know, no one sees the face of God and leaves. So God always showed him his back. But even the back is enough. And here the psalmist tells us today, Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. That is what humanity is saying today. We want to see the face of God. But the face of God is not in activity. It's not in action. The face of God and the voice of God is beating in my heart. He's calling me. He's speaking to me. If we quiet in ourselves, if we quiet in ourselves. You know, even in church, we find it difficult to be quiet. But when we are quiet, people just, some people just fall asleep. <laughs> as soon as they quiet a little bit, they just fall asleep because they're not used to it. So then they fall asleep even in church. They're not used to it. Just racing and racing. That is the heresy, heresy of good works, heresy of racing into the world. No, let's listen. God is waiting on us. He wants us also to wait. How can you have a meaningful conversation when you are not waiting and listening to the one who is having conversation with you? God is ready to have this conversation with us. So Advent season, you see, the priest puts on violet in the purple. Because it has a penitential character. Penitence. Readiness for us to cleanse ourselves of the spiritual stupor. Our sleepiness in sin. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. When we are not in God, we wither. The leaves, the leaves, our fruits the wither just like the leaves outside. What's happening? Because the tree, the trees are dying because of the season. But if we are in the Lord, we will be like Mount Zion that does not, that cannot be shaken. Our leaves can con we continue to spread and grow. Our fruits will continue to flourish. But being in the Lord is prayerfully watching and being alert. Prayerfully watching and being alert. Prayerfully. The time of Advent. It's a time of waiting, of listening, of praying, listening in prayer for the coming of the Savior. And the coming of the Savior is twofold. The coming of the Savior in the final time is going to come, to come to judge the living and the dead. We say that always in the, in the, in the creed, coming to judge the living and the dead, so that the next coming. But there's a first coming, which we celebrate between 27th and 24th. Already, people are shopping. Really? The news? No. There's no news. And we live as, like, kids forever, chasing after gifts. <laughs> you know, yeah. We live like kids forever, chasing after gifts. But I know, truly, truly speaking, if we are actually preparing for Jesus' birth, then he's the one that deserves a gift, don't you think? Huh? He's the one that deserves a gift. What better gift can I give to the Lord? Go to confession and cleanse my sin, my heart from sin. Because if... Sin has so much polluted myself that I've become a polluted rag before God. The first thing then is to cleanse my heart. That is where the Lord is going to be. It's not about a Christmas tree. Mm -mm, maybe not. 
I tell you, it's not. The hall. Here, prepare a worthy place for the Lord in your heart. Make a special, special preparation for him. The guests, the greatest guest ever you ever receive in your heart is the Lord Jesus. Watch and pray. Watch and be alert. Do not allow the evil one bring doubt or sow the seed of loneliness or isolation or anything in your heart. Speak out your voice to the Lord. When you pray, you deepen a relationship. When we converse with our friends, we deepen our relationship with them. When we converse with God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit, we deepen that relationship. Nobody can come in between us and him when we pray. He continues to wait on us, listens to us. And I tell you, the God who made the heavens and the earth is our friend. And he listens to us. He waits on us. But are we ready to have that conversation with him? You shouldn't be scared of him. He's your father. He's my father. And truly, he is. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 